Breaking news off the top, we've got a police pursuit with Sky Fox overhead. Right now, we are in the city of West Covina with El Monte police following. I believe it's the other way around. I think we're actually in El Monte. Um, okay, we're going to stick with this. We haven't had any indication about why this person is being pulled over, but you can see right there, black and whites in hot pursuit. Uh, this appears to be some type of a surface street, and that's where it's so very dangerous because you never know when there might be some kind of a crash on these surface streets. It's late right now. Of course, it's 10 o'clock, so the chances of somebody being uh, actually walking at this hour is not very likely. But uh, these are always very dangerous, Susan. We don't have a lot of information as yet, only to tell you that at one point the car was going about 70 miles per hour on surface streets. And as we said, through West Covina and also El Monte, it may be a stolen vehicle. Uh, one officer was asking and this is all unconfirmed information, but was asking if a gun and a vest were left inside the West Covina PD vehicle. So now it might be that this is actually a police, police pursuit near Alhambra involving a police vehicle. Desmond Shaw is live in Sky 9 above it all. Desmond, what's going on? Yeah, Peter, Andrea, is certainly not something you see every day. Seems like we're always talking about chases. How often do we talk about a chase where the suspect vehicle is actually a police vehicle? So uh, we haven't gotten confirmation that this is stolen or even what agency it is. He's going so fast, I'm trying to zoom in to see uh, just what agency this vehicle is from. But we know that it started off, we picked up the chase uh, right around Fairway and Valley Boulevard in the Walnut area. And he has just been flying westbound on Valley Boulevard. He's been on Valley Boulevard this entire time now, just across Garfield. They're now coming to another major intersection. This is going to be Atlantic, and let's see what he does. Just blowing through lights. And, you know, to everyone else, this must look like this is just a, a police officer trying to get to an emergency situation since he's got sirens on and uh, lights flashing. And so everyone is going to be pulling over for him. And uh, just obviously a pretty crazy situation here. We had heard the speeds of up to 70 miles an hour on Valley Boulevard and going through a big uh, construction zone. And Valley Boulevard, one of the busiest streets in the L.A. metro area. So obviously a very da uh, dangerous situation. We're on the western edge of Alhambra now. He will be heading towards East Los Angeles and actually Cal State East L.A. should be coming up here as well as the uh, 710 freeway. Well, and Desmond, very unusual situation. We see that the vehicle has its lights on. Does it have its sirens on as well? I, I believe I did hear on the scanner that they did have the sirens on as well. So uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do with this, but I did hear that they were calling for spike strips. But that was back at Valley Boulevard in the uh, West Coast, or actually, uh, I should say, in the Puente area where they were calling for a spike strip. So I'm not sure that they had any available. And we're going to be approaching uh, Cal State East L.A. here momentarily. We're still westbound on Valley Boulevard. And Desmond, you mentioned how confusing this must be for a lot of viewers who are watching this. This is actually a stolen police vehicle. I know we're still getting some information, but any idea how that suspect got into the vehicle? No, no idea at all about how how they got into a vehicle. You would think if any vehicle would be difficult to steal, it would be it would be a, a police agency vehicle. But it does appear uh, that that is what's going on here. Westbound, still on Valley Boulevard, and I believe we're. Uh, we're going to get the across street here for you in just a bit. Uh, let me pan out here, and we will be coming up near the beginning of the 710 freeway, so we'll see if uh, he's going to decide to keep it westbound on Valley or perhaps pick up uh, some freeways here. I guess the good news in all of this is for people who are driving in that area, they see the lights, possibly the sirens, and you can see that they're getting out of the way anyway because they think it is an actual police vehicle on some kind of emergency call. Um, have we had any word about possible collisions with any other cars? I haven't, haven't heard of any collisions, haven't seen any collisions, and you're right, that is probably the only silver lining to this right now is that at least people uh, looking in their rearview mirror should, in theory anyway, have a pretty good heads up here to get out of the way of this guy who, again, has been clocked at speeds up to 70 miles an hour on Valley. The speed limit on Valley Boulevard, I know, can get as low as 25 miles an hour. A very, very busy street, lots of signals, and this guy's just been blowing through all kinds of red lights and intersections. Very dangerous indeed, Desmond, and as you mentioned, this all happened... Uh, Earlier this evening, your fairway and Valley Boulevard is when we first found out about this pursuit. This was in the Walnut area about a half hour ago. But as you can see right now, that vehicle, the police vehicle, still going. It's blown through several intersections, going about 70 miles per hour. 
Uh, very dangerous, of course, for folks who may not understand that this police vehicle with the lights flashing and the sirens blaring is actually stolen. And as you can see, it's still going. That's right. I believe that was just the beginning of the 710 freeway there. He would have had the option to go southbound on the 710, but has uh, opted to stick with Valley Boulevard uh, at this point. So now he will be getting, I uh, believe, into the El Sereno area. And the next up will be the uh, 5 freeway and possibly the Eastdale Interchange. And uh, quite a few options uh, for him there. Uh, let's try to get in front of these buildings here and uh, these tall trees. Try to keep this uh, in sight for you. I know we have a couple of sheriff's helicopters overhead as well, so I don't think they're going to be able to, rather, this one is not going to get away from these guys. We had seen a couple of chases in the last couple of weeks where uh, sheriff's departments had had trouble keeping up or, or rather keeping pace with some of these suspects, and, and a couple of suspects had gotten away, but I don't think that's going to be the case tonight. And the other scary part of all this is we don't know what is in that police vehicle. There could be weapons in there and other uh, gear in there that police actually use. So we don't know what's in that vehicle and what that suspect could actually use to his or her advantage. Yeah, that's right. You know, obviously, uh, police departments keep a lot of uh, different utilities inside uh, of their vehicles, obviously weapons and uh, computers, all, all kinds of different stuff. So that is a very good point. No idea what is inside uh, this police cruiser uh, at the moment. Here we go. We still westbound on Valley. I believe this is a Huntington Drive. We're just crossing underneath right now. So he'll be into the El Sereno area. And again, we'll be at this pace. We'll be at the five freeway here. Uh, pretty quickly at this point. And Desmond, it's hard for us to read, but what department does this police cruiser belong to? Yeah, that's uh, we've been trying to read that as well. It's kind of kind of dark here, and he's just been going along so quickly. I can uh, try to put in the the doubler. Let me see if this will yield any results. Now it's, uh, it's uh, just a little bit too dark, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if it's uh, this. I've been w listening uh, in on uh, LA County Sheriff's the Industry Division, so it might be uh, the City of Industry or, or one of the uh, surrounding localities. And it's curious that the driver, oh, you see that other police mm. vehicle getting up close. That's the closest we've yeah, seen. Getting right up on him. Possibly yeah, thinking yeah, of doing a pit maneuver. He's getting right up on him now. Yeah, let's see if he's going to come in with anything here. I haven't heard them say anything about uh, trying to do a pit maneuver pursuit intervention technique. Uh, but it, certainly I would say that conditions, traffic conditions are light enough and these officers obviously well trained enough that they would be able to pull off one of these. And that is going to be the five freeway now that we're going underneath and uh, still going westbound. And uh, we'll get some cross streets here for you in just a second. Now, it looked like that one police vehicle came up close and then either it slowed down or the suspect vehicle kept mm -hmm. on going even faster. Does it look like it's, it's speeding up? Yeah, well, he's he's kind of trying to keep pace with him here. You know, these 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 vehicles are modified, obviously, for for law enforcement and uh, very high on the the uh, horsepower. Now going over the L.A. River, uh, it looks like so. We'll be heading towards the downtown L.A. area now at mm. this point, and uh, still trying to get some cross streets here for you. It's uh, and boy, right now trying to try to keep pace with this guy. You can see traffic is uh, pretty light, but if he is here. heading towards the downtown area, obviously there's the possibility of more congestion. A lot of people might be out right now. It is a Sunday mm -hmm. evening. A very dangerous pursuit you're watching right now, folks. This is probably confusing if you're just joining us because this is actually a stolen police vehicle. Uh, Desmond Shaw telling us that this all happened about a half hour ago. This vehicle stolen from the Walnut area. A lot of this involving uh, side streets, mainly Valley Boulevard. But as you can see, this driver has no intention of slowing down, going up to 70 miles per hour, even faster at some points, blowing through stoplights, blowing through stop signs. And as you can see, just still driving pretty right recklessly. There. Yeah, going through a red yeah, light. Yeah, we're right now on there. Alameda. We're now on Alameda. Uh, now on Alameda Street. I believe this is going to be southbound Alameda. And once again, just blowing through intersections there. It looked for a moment like that that other officer was going to come in, perhaps for, for a mm -hmm. pit maneuver, and then he sped up and got away. So I'm not sure if he was anticipating that or what. There's Union Station you now see. So we are indeed south on Alameda. We're passing by Union Station. Mm. And it is looks like lot? he may be joining the... Yeah, it looks like he may be Making joining the freeway, the freeway here. Oh, the freeway. Okay, I see. Looks yeah, like he's getting on the 101. Yeah, this is going to be the 101. Yeah, he's uh, going to be on the 101 just south of the four level, so he'll have the option of picking up uh, either the north or south 101 or the north or south 110. Now getting onto the uh, freeway here. Here we go. Mm. And So he is now in the downtown area. Yeah, it looks like he's getting on the 101 northbound. 
Uh, it appears that uh, yeah, there he's now are. on the freeway. And this yeah, makes it even more. Yeah. This makes it even more difficult for law enforcement because at least on side streets, there's the opportunity for a pit maneuver. There's the opportunity possibly for spike strips, but on the freeway, all of that is much more difficult. Yeah, coming up on some uh, stop traffic now. So now let's see what happens. He's northbound on the 101, mm. right over, uh, mm. right over the four-level interchange, and now officers able to get really close to this guy, and he's uh, uh, he zigzagging stopping? around. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting into some, uh, some heavy traffic and kind of some low visibility for us here. Stand by, but as you can see, we're now northbound on the 101 getting right near the end of the merger with the 110, which is always busy, even at this time of evening. Uh, you can see pretty heavy traffic developing through there, zigzagging around, officers in pursuit not too far behind. And you and have to wonder. Obviously, everyone is going to be confused. What is going mm -hmm. on through here. the minds of these drivers? Because from their perspective, they see a, a vehicle with the lights flashing. They think this is actually a police officer. So they're doing what they think they're yep. supposed to be doing, getting out of the way. Little do exactly. they know, this could actually, this is a suspect. Exactly. Unintentionally aiding him. You know, there's no way that, 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 that anyone could, could ascertain that here as they're on the freeway. But uh, indeed, it, it, that, is, that is the advantage that this guy has. Uh, and, but as we were also saying, it plays a little bit in, into safety for people is that they'll, mm -hmm. they'll get out of the way here. We're now northbound on the 110 getting through the Echo Park and Silver Lake area, heading up towards the uh, greater Hollywood area and the uh, San Fernando Valley. And even for the, uh, this late on a Sunday, now you can see quite a few people out at uh, this point. Northbound on the 101, and uh, we'll check the speeds here, but we're definitely getting pretty fast here. I'm, I'm going to say probably right around 80, maybe 90 miles an hour mm. here northbound on the 101. Now, Desmond, have you seen the CHP join in now on this pursuit? I have not. I've uh, seen the, the just the, the uh, same cruisers here uh, that have, have been in pursuit the entire time, I uh, believe, again, from the industry Walnut area. and they've, they've been on top of this. I have not heard about the CHP joining in on this chase. Northbound on the 101, we just saw the uh, Benton exit there not too long ago. We'll be coming up uh, on Vermont here pretty quickly. That's the Silver Lake, Silver Lake exit that he just went by. And uh, looks like he's staying in the left lane, but we saw him zigzagging through some traffic there uh, back uh, or right around the four-level interchange. So uh, here we go. Uh, we're going to see this guy w again, yeah, g getting out of the way. Mm -hmm. For, for what they think is an officer, but is actually a suspect, quite possibly in a stolen police cruiser. Just a bizarre, bizarre chase, Desmond. Let's talk about some of the options that police have. You know, obviously they have to be very careful with this guy, but you know, now that he's on the freeway going extremely fast in a police vehicle, what do they need to do or what can they do? Yeah, I, I would. I would still say that the, the uh, pit maneuver is going to be one of one of the best options. But you know, the the, the window to 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 do that maneuver is going to be pretty small. And certainly, when traffic is this heavy, but you know, a chase that does come to mind was uh, one through downtown LA in rush hour traffic, and we saw CHP pulling uh, a, a a pit maneuver. Uh, in, in rush hour traffic. So if they believe that they have the opportunity to do it, they think that this person is driving so erratically that it would be safer to uh, do the pit maneuver in fairly heavy traffic. That is certainly something they will do. And using a spike strip is not going to be nearly as easy of an option now that they're on the freeway. Uh, that was definitely something that, that would have been uh, fantastic if they could have back on Valley Boulevard. So uh, perhaps if they can communicate with uh, other agencies up ahead, if he gets off the freeway, they could have some spike strips in place. But I believe at this, at this point, the uh, pit maneuver is probably going to be the uh, best bet. And just to recap for folks who may now just be joining us, we don't know exactly how this suspect got into this police cruiser. We don't know which agency specifically or which department this vehicle uh, belongs to. We do know that this all started in the Walnut area and uh, was mainly on surface streets, but as you can see, now on the 101. So Desmond, where exactly is he right now, and where, where does it look like he's sort of veering towards? Right now, we are still uh, northbound on the 101. As I look out the window here, we are going to be uh, approaching the Cahuenga Pass here pretty quickly. Uh, he's just been flying through the uh, Hollywood area. There you see the uh, Church of Scientology right off of the uh, 101 freeway. So we're uh, coming away from uh, Hollywood Boulevard at Franklin, and uh, we will now be north and westbound into the uh, San Fernando Valley. Got to wonder where this person is going. I mean, he's being very conspicuous about wherever he's he or she is traveling to. Uh, Desmond, do we know any more about possibly where this stolen police cruiser is from yet? Yeah, I've, I've still, you know, the, the, the uh, scanners have gone silent on, on this one. Uh, I've mm. been uh, trying to 
to, to uh, get around and, and get get that information for you guys uh, to, uh, don't don't have it at the moment here we're northbound we're going to be coming up away from the highland on-ramp there's the highland off-ramp right there getting into kind of some low visibility here so uh, might the, the 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 shot might get a little bit grainy actually some low clouds now beginning to come through the Coanga pass but he's on his way looks like to the san fernando valley this is this is again a chase that started uh, just about 40 minutes ago or so in the Walnut area. So we've already covered uh, quite, a, quite a bit of ground here at, at very high speeds. He's definitely been using this to his advantage, these uh, lights and sirens mm -hmm. to get people out of his way. That's, you know, really allowed him to, to just go pedal to the metal here. Now northbound on the 101 will be into a universal city here pretty quickly. And as you mentioned, Desmond, this is very unusual, especially for the drivers who are on the 101, probably assuming that a police vehicle is trying to respond to some sort of an emergency. So they're doing what they assume is the correct action, which is getting out of the way. Uh, but uh, this is just completely just unusual for these drivers. And you can see right now that vehicle swerving around, going up to 100 miles per hour, we're told at some point. And uh, now definitely getting a little bit more dicey because the traffic, as you yeah, mentioned, get, is starting to sort of congest more. Yeah, indeed. Uh, this is obviously another very busy point here, the uh, Coanga Pass, even at this evening. You know, have a lot of people coming back from, from an evening in Hollywood, or you're going to have people coming back from Universal Studios up ahead as well. So we did see a little bit of traffic. And you can tell people are definitely confused because you, you have this, what, what they think is an officer just flying along here. Uh, northbound on the 101 and then you've got you know the other officers right behind them so uh, you know I don't think people <laughs> could, could really tell just exactly what's going on we're now in the Universal City uh, so we are in the San Fernando Valley unfortunately we are past the low clouds here visibility in the valley is going to be a lot better uh, at this point we'll be coming up on the Hollywood split so he'll have the option of the northbound 170 that will be the two left lanes or if he stays to the right he will pick up the westbound 101 through the Studio City area. But this driver really is zigzagging through traffic, but it, it is a bit safer, I would assume, for drivers to be getting out of the way and knowing that there is a police cruiser behind them, um, though it makes it more difficult for this driver to be caught, but at least drivers are getting out of the way and trying to get out of harm's way. Exactly. Yeah, kind of, kind of a double-edged sword there. Mm -hmm. Like we were saying, you know, you'll see the the flashing lights coming up in the rearview mirrors, so people will uh, naturally get out of the way there. But then that's, you know, only only helping this guy. So it looks like he is going to be staying to the left so far, unless he tries some last-second maneuver. It looks like he is. Yeah, he is now going northbound on the 170. And uh, mm. in, in my opinion, this would be a, a pretty good freeway to try a, a pit maneuver or something because northbound on the 170 on a Sunday night is not going to be one of the more congested freeways. So perhaps let's see if uh, this will allow the uh, agencies here in pursuit to uh, perhaps uh, bring this safely to an end. But a very scary situation for officers because even if this vehicle stops, we don't know, as we've said before, we don't know what is in that police cruiser. There might be a weapon, there might be something else that the suspect could use on the officers. So really not a good situation right now. No, definitely not. I, you know, I mean, it, it is probably a pretty a pretty safe bet that there are weapons inside that vehicle. I mean, obviously, a lot of uh, almost any law enforcement agency is going to have uh, some kind of weapon in their vehicle uh, at all times. So really flying along now, getting up to very, very high speeds, northbound on the 170, leaving the North Hollywood, the Valley Village area. He'll be headed up towards uh, the Pacoima area and then up towards the F5 freeway. That driver certainly on a very daring dash to freedom right now, showing no sign of slowing down, going upwards to 100 miles per hour right now on the 170 freeway. Uh, and Desmond, again, we keep talking about it, but it's worth repeating, a very confusing situation for drivers because they are seeing the flashing lights, hearing the sirens. They're probably assuming this is a legitimate police vehicle. We're told that perhaps this... Uh, vehicle came out of West Covina. We're still trying to confirm that, but uh, that could be the department that this vehicle belongs to West Covina. Again, starting around 945 this evening, uh, stayed on a lot of surface streets until it then got onto the 101 in the downtown area. Now in North Hollywood on the 170 freeway, still zigzagging around cars, going very fast. A very dangerous situation that still continues with this driver. No, no sign of slowing down at all. Mm -mm. 
no, no, no sign of slowing down at all. And uh, yeah, like you said, you know, when you you see the, a, a lot of people here that are driving are probably thinking that this guy is is the lead cruiser. Uh, you know, for wherever they're headed, he probably they probably just think that this is the lead car in in a convoy of authorities uh, headed somewhere. And you know, turns out, surprise, this is actually the guy that all the other cops are chasing right now. Very high rates of speed, northbound 170 here, uh, up to about 80 or 90 miles an hour here. We will be upon the five freeway uh, pretty quickly. You got to wonder where this person is going. A lot of times we've been we've covered so many pursuits as you have as well, Desmond. And sometimes they have a location, a destination in mind, a home, a relative's home, possibly. Got to wonder where this person is going. And at some point, they will be running out of gas. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens as they continue to zip through traffic. There, they are going much faster than the flow of traffic. Wonder what speeds they're at now, Desmond. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I can tell you from experience of driving the 170 uh, quite a few times that this is a freeway that a lot of people like to speed on. And so when you can see that this guy is going as fast as he is, uh, we're pretty close to triple-digit speeds now here northbound on the 170. And you're right, you know, a lot of times these suspects end up going to, to neighborhoods where they live or, or places they're very familiar with or perhaps they have friends that they think that uh, can help them out or, or something like that. So, okay, now he's going to be getting off the freeway. I believe this is Roscoe Boulevard. Uh, let's see what he does here. There's actually a collector lane that will allow him to continue on the freeway if he chooses. And it looks like he is going to be exiting the freeway. This is actually, I believe this is Sherman Way that uh, he's coming around into. And you can see the uh, overhead the, the overhead spotlights there uh, of the sheriff's choppers that have been in pursuit on this as well. So I believe this is now westbound on Sherman Way. So that's the Van Nuys and, uh, area, will be Desmond? This this is going to be more like the Panorama City area, okay. and yeah, headed headed westbound. So once again, you know, we're going to see uh, on some pretty pretty congested streets here. And it may be uh, more and, advantageous. Okay, into a gas oh, station. Into a gas station. It, into a gas station. Ooh. Let's see what it. Well, it looks oh, like he's just trying to. Shortcut. Yeah. Just driving completely recklessly. You know, we were going to say maybe advantageous uh, now that the driver is getting off the freeway for. Uh, the following agencies to try to do some sort of pit maneuver because obviously conditions have to be just right. You can't be going too fast on the freeway for that to happen, but still very dangerous mm. right now because he is still just going extremely fast on these surface streets in the Panorama City area. Yeah. Yes, I mean, he's, he's going freeway speeds here on, on surface streets. He was briefly westbound on Sherman Way. We saw him cut through that gas station, and now he is south. I believe this is going to be Whitsitt. And so, you know, again, now people people just walking by or driving by, they think that this guy is on his way to, to an emergency to go help somebody out. And, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, it turns out that this is actually the person who is, is being chased. So very confusing situation for uh, bystanders coming through. And we're now coming uh, up over the Metrolink tracks here southbound. Again, I believe this is Whitsitt. So now he'll be heading back down towards the Valley Village area and the 101 freeway. It is so nerve-wracking to watch this. You see the freeway speeds going on surface streets. And if there's a pedestrian in the way, they're not going to have time to get out of the way. <laughs> it's just very scary to watch all this unfold. Yeah, yeah. That, I believe that was actually Laurel Canyon that he was south on, and now he just turned back eastbound. So now we're heading back, kind of make, looping back around towards the uh, 170 freeway. And I believe this is going to be victory. Uh, pretty sure here so now back back through the uh, valley village area and uh, towards the uh, 170 mm -hmm. and making a southbound turn indeed back on to mm -hmm. the 170 so now we're south mm -hmm. on the 170 once again basically made a big loop and headed back down towards the hollywood split and uh, he will have options to stay south onto the 101 hollywood freeway or eastbound on the 134. And with all of these erratic moves, there's really no way for officers to do spike strips because you don't know where this guy is going to go. Yeah, got it. Now, he's been driving Absolutely pretty erratic. No idea where this guy's going to go. It doesn't yeah, seem yeah, like he has very, a destination. Very, very high speeds. No, no, I think I think he's he's just thinking he's going to go pedal to the metal and get away. But you know, again, we we still have two sheriffs helicopters uh, on pursuit overhead, and I'm noticing now that units are starting to keep their distance a little bit. And we've seen this a lot in previous years where 
uh, chases and horrifically because of very high speeds and with uh, the authorities close in pursuit. So to try to encourage this driver to, to ease off the gas pedal a little bit, they will they will uh, kind of cut back or, or rather stay back and give this guy some space and hope that he slows down and stop stops uh, endangering everybody. And so where is the vehicle now? He got back on the 170. Which direction was that, Desmond? This is uh, southbound on the 170, so now uh, through the North Hollywood area, and we're going to be coming back mm -hmm. upon the the uh, southbound 101 Hollywood Freeway uh, here very quickly. I believe that is a Riverside Drive, and yes, uh, we are sticking with the southbound 101, uh, it looks like at this point. So going backwards from where he just was coming from. Yeah, yeah, he's now uh, completely looping back, so now towards the Coanga Pass and through the Universal City area, and uh, we'll, we'll see if he continues back towards downtown LA where we saw some of that heavy traffic and where it, it looked for a moment like we could have almost seen the end of this pursuit, but he was able to uh, worm his way around a couple of vehicles and uh, weave around them, and uh, we saw him go up to the valley, and now he's doubling back, as we said, southbound, very high rates of speed, just near probably about 100 miles an hour, and yeah, we are actually just now coming up onto the uh, southbound 101 freeway here, getting ready to cross the 134, where the 170 turns into the southbound uh, 101 Hollywood freeway. And again, we are hearing that this vehicle may belong to West Covina's police department. Another thing that may be discouraging, this tank of gas may be completely full, we're being told by police, that this uh, driver may not stop, it seems, until that, you know, we were talking about maybe when he runs out of gas, that might not even be an option at this point if that tank is completely full. So. Right now, as you can see, he is still tailing it through North Hollywood. Um, we were mentioning it just doesn't seem like he knows where he's going. He's looping around, but still going at a very dangerous speed, possibly um, getting back on the freeway soon. Yeah, we, yeah, we are uh, southbound on the 101 through Universal uh, City. And, yeah, I have to say, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I haven't seen any other agencies pick up pick up on this one. It has been uh, L.A. County Sheriff's. A lot of times they will hand this uh, over to another jurisdiction, to LAPD or, or to the uh, Highway Patrol. That has not been the case. It looks like we've had uh, West Covina uh, police here in pursuit the entire time. I will say, though, that if he continues to drive, you know, these, these old Crown Victorias are not exactly known for their gas mileage. And when you're going triple digits mm -hmm. like that, you see we're just just now going by uh, the Universal Studios area. Uh, he will certainly run out of gas a lot a lot more quickly with these uh, triple digit speeds. Now southbound on the 101 will be coming up to the Coanga Pass and down towards the Hollywood area very quickly at this rate. And Desmond, it looks like drivers are continuing to get out of this person's way. Uh, you got to wonder if this person actually wants the sirens and lights on, if it's if it is helping in his getaway, or if he's trying to figure out how to turn those things off so he can be more inconspicuous and maybe try to lose officers. Yeah, that 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 is an interesting point. You know, I mean, obviously he, he's not going to be able to 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 slip away with with the uh, lights and sirens going as it is. Uh, so that is certainly a disadvantage for him. But with the lights and sirens on, everyone is also yielding to him. So uh, it is it is ki kind of a double-edged sword here. Now, southbound on the 101, coming up on Highland, that's a Coenga you see there just to the top of the screen. And uh, he will be down into the Hollywood area. And you know, the uh, southbound 101, as I gaze ahead, uh, it looks like it is actually pretty open through the Hollywood area. We'll probably start to see some slower traffic, though, right around the four level, as we saw earlier when he was northbound on the 101. So now doubling back into the Coenga Pass, southbound on the 101. Uh, this what appears to be a, a stolen police cruiser out of the West Covina City of Industry Walnut area. So he may be going back to where this all began because he went north, now he's going back south. And usually when we see these types of chases, the suspects tend to stay in areas they're familiar with, which may explain some of the erratic driving we saw mm -hmm. earlier when he got off and didn't really know exactly where he was going. But now it seems like he's making a return to where this all could have started around 945 this evening. Yeah, and I did see a, it looked like a California Highway Patrol. I don't know if he if he was just incidentally happened to be on the freeway and, and he was going to give an assist there. But but uh, this guy just blown by there as he has been everybody. We're definitely uh, up up around 100 miles an hour now. Southbound mm. on the 101. And, you know, this is a freeway. This was, oh, this is the, the, the second freeway that was built in L.A. back in the 1950s. So this is not a stretch of concrete that is designed for cars uh, to be traveling at, uh, at this rate of speed. And, well, he's hanging to the right here like he may be exiting the freeway let's see what happens here this is Hollywood Boulevard we're coming up on and indeed he is exiting the freeway at Hollywood Boulevard and we'll mm. see if he goes uh, east or west either into the heart of Hollywood or into the uh, East Hollywood and Little Armenia area 
acting like he's going to go towards the left, and that is what he's doing. So he's going to head towards uh, the oh. East Hollywood area. Unless, well, let's see, maybe he's going to rejoin the freeway again, zigzagging around. Uh. Well, he had the option to uh, rejoin the 101. Let's, uh, I'll try to get around these buildings here. Eastbound on Hollywood Boulevard, obviously one of the uh, busiest streets in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, he can take this over uh, towards Vermont, possibly, the uh, Los Feliz area. We'll uh, see where he goes here, having some trouble with some buildings. Uh, can we try to get to the other side here? Well, the good news so far, go. at least, this, is this. that it doesn't appear there are any crashes or injuries. As a is he stopping? Nope, he's going around those cars. At this point, it doesn't seem like yeah. he has caused any crashes, but obviously that could still happen. It is very oh, dangerous right oh. now that this person is still just going very, very fast, up to 100 miles per hour now on surface streets in Hollywood. A lot of people out yeah, Sunday well, night. I cer I, yep. I certainly hope he has his sirens on because we have, you know, a lot of people out walking around. Okay, he's making a turn down a, a small residential street uh, in the in the Hollywood area. So now we're northbound away from Hollywood Boulevard, back up towards Franklin. Uh, a very very dense area here. Lots of lots of apartment buildings. Uh, you can see by all the cars parked here. Very narrow streets here. So a very very dangerous situation here. Now I believe he is eastbound. Oh, this is going to be Franklin. Uh, eastbound on Franklin, now headed towards the Los Feliz area. A tough position for police right now because at some points, Desmond, we were talking about how police kind of take a step back because they don't want to put the public's safety in jeopardy. However, this is a police cruiser, so they don't want to let this car go. Uh, so what do they no. do at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your, guess, your guess is as good as mine. This is a very delicate uh, situation for sure. Uh, obviously, they're going to want to recover their their vehicle, but you know they have to wonder uh, what kind of weapons might might be uh, in, inside the vehicle. Okay, we're now turning mm. uh, northbound again, away from Franklin. This is going to be up now towards the Hollywood Hills area, uh, into uh, a very very nice residential street as he uh, heads north, kind of kind of headed towards the Hollywood side now at this point. And very narrow streets. Mm -hmm. You got to wonder how this is all going to play out. Yeah, very, very narrow streets, and, and again, you know, I, I, I don't know if he has his sirens on at this point, but just for, for the safety of everybody around him, I certainly hope that he does. That stolen car again now heading towards the Hollywood Hills area uh, in Los Feliz right now, still blowing through stop signs and intersections, still driving very recklessly and very fast. Um, and that's the, the problem here is that we don't know how this is going to end or if there is a destination that this driver is trying to get to. But it appears that this guy is just going as fast and as dangerous as possible and has no intention of stopping or slowing down. Yeah, and you, you know what? And then we are now on Los Feliz. Uh, it looks like he is going to be east on Los Feliz. That was just Vermont, a uh, major street that we just crossed over. So now he will be heading back towards the 5 Freeway and the uh, Glendale area here, eastbound on Los Feliz. That is uh, Hillcrest, I believe, that we just passed over. And uh, now using the center divider to get around traffic. Los Feliz, another very, very busy street at any time of the afternoon or evening. And you can see that he just blew through another red light. But again, the good news in all of this, we can hear at times sirens actually going. And you see the lights there. So cars are getting out of their way. Yeah, cars are definitely getting out of the way. And uh, that's that's really the, the only positive thing about this. But you just really incredible speeds on, on surface streets and on freeways at this point. And he will be approaching the A5 freeway here pretty quickly. Eastbound on Los Feliz as we head towards the Glendale and Atwater Village area. You know, I have to say, this may be one of the most nerve wracking and confusing chases that we have seen in quite some time. Desmond, do we know anything more about this suspect, how he got into this vehicle to begin with? No, we, uh, we still don't have that information for you. It's just, uh, yeah, I, I got to say, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen uh, in any of my time covering this chases. Uh, a, a police vehicle that has, has been used against the police here uh, in a chase. And as, as we were saying, uh, quite possibly weapons inside this vehicle. So even if they can uh, bring the chase to an end, then what's going to happen after that if, if, if this suspect is possibly armed? Again, this all started possibly in the Walnut area. What you're looking at, the lead cruiser there is actually a stolen police cruiser, possibly out of the West Covina area. And we've been monitoring this chase now for a good... Uh, 35 minutes or so. Uh, luckily, no cars, no people have been hit so far because those sirens and lights have been on. But this car going at speeds up to 70 to 100 miles an hour, not just on the freeway, but on city side streets like you're looking at right now. 
Yeah, and we are eastbound. We are still eastbound on Los Feliz. We saw him cross over the A5 freeway uh, not too long ago, so he's in the uh, Atwater Village area now at this point and headed towards uh, Glendale, and uh, he will be uh, coming up, I believe, to Central Avenue here pretty quickly. Uh, so right into the heart of Glendale, and uh, he will have quite a few options at this point. Another red light obviously just, just blew through there. That's probably uh, you know the, the 20th or so, several dozen uh, vehicles he's blown through. This is now Central. He's headed northbound on Central, so he will be uh, headed up towards a very busy area of, uh, of, the, of the Glendale area, and the next freeway up there will be the uh, 134 freeway. This is very nerve-wracking to watch. This suspect just zigzagging across the area with the LA County Sheriff's deputies in pursuit. Again, just not showing any sign of stopping or slowing down. You could just see him blowing through all those intersections and all those stoplights. Still going freeway speeds on surface streets here now in Glendale. Desmond, what options do police have? What can they do to possibly stop this guy? Well, we were, you know, we were hoping that we were going to see a, a, a pit maneuver or something earlier. But when you're traveling at these kind of speeds, it's very difficult to, 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 to pull off a maneuver like that. I mean, you, you know, you're, you're thinking if, if this suspect, especially on surface streets, if this suspect is traveling, you know, at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour on the surface street, then how fast does the officer have to go mm -hmm. in order to uh, to pull off a maneuver like that? So we're now going by the Americana at Brand, a mm -hmm. very uh, busy shopping mm -hmm. center that actually should be shut down at this point mm -hmm. but uh, he is northbound on central just cross through colorado right there uh, right in the uh, heart of the glendale area and we will be upon the uh, 134 freeway here pretty quickly yeah so the options are pit maneuvers which are very difficult to do at this point at those speeds and and spike strips but again this person is okay, turning uh, quarters uh, making twists and turns going on freeways and getting on city streets so there's really no way to use spike strips because we don't know where this person's going to end up yeah, yeah, and he just uh, made an eastbound turn there, north or uh, uh, east eastbound away from the Glendale Galleria. So he's now paralleling the uh, 134, and the next major street is going to be Glendale Avenue here for uh, this chase, which again started back uh, in the San Gabriel Valley, in the eastern edge of the San Gabriel Valley. We had heard it starting around Fairway and Valley in the Walnut area, covered a lot of a lot of territory in a very short amount of time. Uh, traveling at these speeds. It actually seems like he's slowed down a little bit within the last five minutes, but not too much. I believe that's Glendale Avenue there that we just crossed. So uh, still headed eastbound and will at this rate be into the Eagle Rock area pretty quickly, but now he's uh, just made another northbound turn. So we are now northbound headed towards the uh, Glendale Freeway, or rather the uh, Ventura Freeway, I should say, the 134, and back westbound again. Obviously incredibly erratic. Yeah, and we've also and seen whenever the police get close, the suspects swerve. So it's also very difficult for them to try to attempt that pit maneuver. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, it, it almost seems like he's uh, been anticipating it. And coming back to Glendale Avenue, I believe, unfortunately, we're getting pretty close to some low clouds here as well. Going to try to keep the uh, shot and get it behind some buildings here. And I believe we're coming up on the 134. Hmm. You can see those officers behind getting real close. It looks like they're going to do a pit maneuver, and then they, either they back off or the suspect well, takes off again. And there's another turn. Yeah. Now here we go. Here oh, we go. I think buck, this is going to be there it. He is. This is it. He, he turned into a he turned into oh. a dead end parking lot. And there's the pit maneuver. They've spun him around, and they're going to try to box him in here. And uh, let's see what happens, and, and just hope that uh, that he doesn't have access to any weapons in there. Oh no, he's oh. not giving up. Oh, this guy no. is refuses to give up. Now in reverse, trying to get out of this parking lot uh, in the uh, Glendale area, pretty close to the 134. Oh. Wow, just slamming in there, just slammed in right into the driver's side. He might have been injured after that one. Looks like it definitely did a number to this police cruiser yeah, as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see all that smoke there. They've got they've got the the, the both of them probably have got their their wheels going in opposite direction so that's a, a lot of rubber burning there and uh, we've got officers obviously out now with uh, with their their weapons drawn and we will let's see how this uh, 
turns out here. Wow. And again, we don't know if wow, there wow, are wow. weapons, what kind of weapons there are in that stolen cruiser. So I'm sure police are very you can see concerned about that. Authorities are now out of their vehicles with weapons drawn, yeah. pointing towards this is the stolen very, cruiser. Very delicate situation now at this point. Um, and, and we don't know. He, the, the, the suspect could very, very easily have been seriously injured at this point. Or, I mean, that, that impact was, was really, mm. really mm. hard. So it's it's entirely possible he he could be incapacitated at this point. We uh, we don't know. Very very delicate situation now. But yes, officers all out in force now, uh, and weapons drawn. We'll just have to see how how this plays out here in the next couple and of minutes. We don't know again if that suspect has access to any weapons inside that police cruiser, which could make this even more tense for those officers trying to figure out what to do. Absolutely, that's really the concern at this point. I'm sure. They, 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 have to, they have to know that there's a very high possibility of, of, of there being weapons in there, and we don't know the mental state of the suspect at this point. And so we, it's, it's really, really hard to, to discern what's going to happen now. It's so dark out there, Desmond. It's really hard to see from our vantage point. I, I can't really see officers. I can see a little bit of movement, but what's happening out there? Yeah, they, it, we've we've got officers out here. You can see they've 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 kind of taken cover around what looks like this parking structure, and they've got their weapons drawn, and they I'm sure are giving uh, commands to the suspect, telling him to get out of the vehicle with his hands up. Uh, but again, after we we saw that that incredible impact there from that cruiser, that SUV that slammed it right into the driver's side of that Crown Victoria. So it's it's hard to say. They're now moving in, so he may mm -hmm. be okay. complying with their orders. He might not very, be able to get out. He has to, he has to get out of pro probably out of the passenger side. Yeah, well, that's that's yeah, that's 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 for sure. He will have to get out of the passenger side if 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 he's if he's even able to. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, T-bone accidents like this, uh, a, lo a lot of times people can come out with very serious injuries. And it looks like this is all surrounded by some townhomes or apartments. So that's got to be. Can you imagine how frightening that mm -hmm. is to look out your window oh, and see what's yeah, going yeah, on? It's, it's, yeah, yeah. This this looks like uh, looks look, looks like residents there, just just there near near the top of the shot there. So you can only imagine what's going through their mind when they they see a police cruiser get slammed into by several other police cruisers. Just just an absolute wild situation. You know, with all the smoke and everything else, just a dramatic conclusion it appears to what has been an extremely confusing, erratic, dangerous chase. Desmond, you mentioned. In all your years of doing this, you don't think you remember ever seeing a stolen police cruiser involved in a pursuit before. So this has been a wild night. It has been a, a wild night. We've seen all kinds of vehicles, you know, old and old and new and, and U-Haul vehicles. And but but yeah, this is the first one that I've 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 seen a, a police cruiser being used uh, to to initiate uh, a, 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 a chase all, all across Southern California. And thank goodness it has come to an end. It, it was possibly a risky move to hit that cruiser, but it had to be done to get this to stop because we saw how many chances uh, this guy took on the road, and he wasn't going to stop willingly, it looked like. Yeah, no, you know, split-second decisions. Obviously, that's what these officers are are trained for. We've seen mm -hmm. some really incredible things with them, with them uh, pulling pulling really, really great pit maneuvers. You know, uh, at, on 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 a moment's notice when they when they see an opportunity to take it, they will. And you know, when they they tried to pin that guy in, and you could see he was not willing to give up. He slammed it into reverse and tried to get away. Now here come the officers. Here come about a half mm -hmm. dozen of them with weapons drawn, and it looks so. Let's see what happens here. And obviously a very delicate situation, as we keep mentioning. We don't know the mental status of this suspect. We also don't know if he has access to any weapons inside. But uh, it appears that the uh, officers are going into the passenger side door. They have flashlights. They also have their guns drawn, making sure that this uh, suspect complies and does what he's supposed to. Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have done this if they they would not have all approached the vehicle mm -hmm. if they thought that there was any danger that this person was, you know, going to fire back with a weapon or something. So uh, perhaps he was he was uh, uh, listening to their commands, and they have uh, now approached and and hopefully they will uh, drag this guy out. I, like I said, they're probably going to have to call an ambulance for this guy because that was really quite some impact uh, from from that from that SUV, from that Ford Explorer that mm -hmm. slammed into that, mm -hmm. into that Crown Victoria. And we were wondering if possibly there was a passenger in the vehicle, but at this point it, it's pretty clear there was probably just the driver because of all those officers heading on the passenger side checking to make sure that driver is okay and trying to make sure he'll get out. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I think so too. I think I think we're probably just talking about uh, a, a single suspect here in, the, in this in this vehicle for this chase that has uh, terminated in the Glendale area. I'm looking out the window here, and we are just east of the uh, of the Glendale Galleria and the brand at Americana in a, uh, a little residential area. And yeah, there there are, are, are apartments all all around here. As I zoom out, you, you can see is pro probably quite a spectacle here for for uh, everybody in the area. And as you mentioned, Desmond, it doesn't appear that the officers are nervous right now or extremely mm -hmm. concerned for their safety. They seem to be standing there, and it almost looks like they're talking to uh, who yeah. was ever inside that cruiser. So you have to imagine this person is probably very injured or just completely willing to surrender. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my thought as well. You can see they're not holding their their weapons in an, in an aggressive manner or, you know, uh, like, like, like they're prepared to fire. So they must be talking to this, to this suspect and uh, pro might just be waiting for, for an ambulance at this point to come. Yeah, as we sit in anticipation of what's going to happen, well, we're so glad that this has finally come to an end because we just didn't know what this driver was capable of doing. Luckily, through all mm -hmm. of his twists and turns and speeding, nobody was injured. And does it look like something is coming out of the driver's side window? I don't know if that's a body part or if that's just a reflection I'm seeing. Or yeah, it could I be think, just I think the that airbag. may just be a, a reflection. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite possibly the airbag there. But yeah, you're right. We, we saw triple digit speeds here uh, all, all across uh, uh, Southern California from Walnut up up towards the Pacoima area before he doubled back and ended up in the Glendale area. And we saw freeway speeds on surface streets. And the first report I'd heard was 70 miles an hour westbound on Valley Boulevard, a street that has a, a ton of intersections. And, uh, you know, it, it may be that, that the, uh, the only reason why no one, why this didn't turn into a more tragic situation is because uh, of the lights and the siren. So it did aid him for a while in getting away. And, and uh, fortunately, it looks like it did at least aid in making sure that, that, that everyone, you know, uh, lo looked alive as he was coming by and no one else got unnecessarily involved in this. Well, certainly a wild end to what has also been an equally wild chase, this all coming uh, to a stop here in Glendale after a police SUV slammed into the stolen cruiser. Uh, we're going to go now to Sports Central here on KCAL 9 News, but we're going to continue to follow this. We're going to bring you the very latest information on our sister station, uh, CBS 2 News, coming up in just a few moments. And uh, Joe from Gill, uh, take a look at our picture. Okay, copy that. Yeah, we didn't show anything, but I just wanted to show you that what they were doing here. Copy that. Thank you.